Yeah, we are live now, so the attendees will join. Okay, thank you. So shall I start, or uh, uh, what do you suggest? There's only one attendee, so maybe we can wait. Okay. How many attendees are we expecting, Anamika? Uh, we have five centers and one more, so six. So uh, if we have five join. people who have joined, so we can maybe start with the introduction if you want. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Hi, all. Welcome to our webinar, second webinar in the series of deep engagement sessions. And uh, I'm Anamika from SIIC. And uh, I just want to give an overview about the whole deep engagement session, first of all. So uh, welcome to uh, the webinar to all the TIDE centers who have joined today. Um, so TIDE 2.0 scheme uh, gives a holistic innovation ecosystem and it has been created through uh, capacity building of incubation centers. Uh, G1, G2 and G3, three categories of uh, TIDE centers are mapped in this scheme and they have been established to target uh, enabling the linkage capacity building collaborative challenge grants startup showcasing pitching and other innovation related activities which activate uh, synchronous participation of all these centers in line with this we have uh, arranged these uh, three virtual webinars and we will have a physical meeting later on uh, 10th march so this is the second in the series uh, we target to create a synergy and sharing of resources through this. So I welcome our speaker, Mr. Amit Anthony Alex today. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Alex, for your time. Yeah, the pleasure is on me. Okay. Uh, so let me introduce our speaker. So Mr. Alex has over 16 years of experience in the social impact space. His last role was heading Upaya Social Ventures Operations in India, where he led investments, capacity building, and portfolio management. Early stage companies creating livelihood opportunities. Prior to Upaya, he has worked with social enterprises in India and globally with United Nations Foundation and Innovent. He has also worked in the not-for-profit space with PayPal, a UK-based NGO, that worked in creating shared value models of partnerships. Mr. Alex is passionate about helping young people build a purposeful career in the social impact space, accelerating social enterprise startups, and he spends his free time cooking new dishes. So welcome again, sir, and over to you. Uh, thanks, Anamika. Um, hi, everyone. Um, it's great um, that you will join on this Wednesday afternoon for this webinar. Um, I want to try and make this as interactive as possible. Uh, I, I'll be sharing my screen with some of the slides that I've prepared 
Um, but in, in, in case any of you have any questions during the webinar, I think there's an option to raise your hand. Uh, and I think Ragni and Bhavya will be supporting me in unmuting you, allowing you to um, raise your question. So, you know, feel free to stop me uh, during the, any time during the webinar. Um, also, I've kept some time aside towards the end, especially uh, uh, for a Q&A, but more around uh, identifying what are challenges that uh, everyone is facing. And maybe we can have a discussion around that as well. Um, so I'm sharing my screen. You should be able to see it now. Um, yeah, so just to give a rough um, agenda, given that it's such a small group, it'll be great uh, for each of you to introduce yourself as well. Uh, so we, we'll spend about 10, 15 minutes and I'll give a framework in terms of how to do the introduction. Um, what, it, what I want to aim to do is try and get to know, you know each of you slightly better uh, so that the, the conversation uh, and the topics that are covered in the webinar, uh, I can then sort of fine tune to your requirement. Um, I'm going to talk about sort of different incubation models, um, importance of sourcing and selection uh, in an incubation model, um, and how to think about enterprise development from say idea to incubation to implementation from a more strategic point of view. And I said, um, in the end, we'll spend some time uh, as a group discussing what are challenges that each of you are facing and see if we can even uh, try and crowdsource solutions that people have. Um, a lot of cases, um, you know, the challenges that you face may be very similar to uh, challenges faced by someone. They might have already found a solution to the whole idea of having a conversation and seeing uh, you know, if we can brainstorm solutions. Um, so that's the agenda, um, and, uh, and Amika, thanks for the introduction. Yes, so, um, you know, uh, just to add, um, my interest has been always been in the social sector, um, so working with social enterprises, but from an incubation point of view, when I think about it, um, be it for-profit companies, be it even, you know, looking at NGOs uh, that are starting out, um, be it purely um, pure for-profit play um, enterprises, the incubation process uh, or the way you think about incubation and supporting early stage enterprises remains the same, right? Um, so, and, I, and I've been doing that for quite a while now. Um, yeah, so, so as, as, as introductions, let's go around one by one. Um, we can... I think the easiest way to do it is if we go alphabetically. What I want to do is, oh, is, is just have you, uh, you know, um, give your name, uh, a two line introduction. Um, what is your expectation from the webinar? Uh, I also want to know which is the organization that you're representing. Uh, what is the focus uh, of? Um, incubation teams, so different incubators tend to have different uh, uh, teams that they work around from an incubation point of view. It can be sector, it can be industry focused, things like that. And what stage do you usually select uh, incubating companies? Is it an idea stage? Is it at, um, say, an MVP or a pilot stage? You know, just for me to understand and what is the uh, service that uh, the incubator provides? Uh, if you can do this with your cameras on, that will be great, just for the 30-second, uh, 45-second introduction. So let's keep it brief. Um, I'm just going to call out names, uh, if that makes sense, depending on who's appearing first. Uh, I think, Aman, do you, could you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Aman Katyar. And uh, actually, I've just uh, got this link from the Facebook and uh, I want to learn like uh, want to learn something informatics in, in which uh, actually enhance my skills. Like I'm, I have some idea and want to uh, start my startup in few months. So I'm getting information from several sources. OK, great. That's also, thank you. 
Uh, I mean, just to set your expectation, this uh, webinar is specifically aimed at incubators and how incubators can uh, look at various models or how they can take a more strategic approach in supporting enterprises. So I just want to set that context. Um, great. Uh, Akansha, do you want to go next? Uh, hello, Amit. Uh, hello. I am from Incubator at IIT Kanpur. So I am the part of the organizing team. Okay, got it. All right, good. Yeah. Um, Arvind, do you want to go next? Yeah, good afternoon, Amit and Monica. Uh, so this side, Arvind Kumar, representing Data Cloud Innovation Circle of Hyderabad. Uh, we are not an incubator specifically, but like more like an enabler, wherein we work with the startup, industry, academia, Etc. Wherein we bridge the challenge, we identify the challenges and we try to uh, solve those challenges by collaborating with the partners. Okay, great. Um, Ati, do you want to go next, Ati Jain? Ati, you are on mute. Can you unmute? It? Okay, as we wait for Ati, uh, Zaid Khan, do you want to go next? Zaid is again from the organizing team. Uh, okay. We can go next. Uh, Dr. Aditya Pratap Singh. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Mm -hmm. Myself, Dr. Aditya Pratap Singh, and uh, I am here in uh, working as an associate professor in Sage University in Lahore. And also, I'm looking after the IEDC, Innovation and Entrepreneur Development Cell. And we are having the Incubation Center, that is the MSME CIRT Incubation Center in Indore, sir. Okay, great. Um, do, you, do you have any expectation from the webinar? Um, that will be great to know. Actually, sir, also we are planning to go for uh, applying for the Incubation Center, that is the mighty and uh, Atal Innovation uh, in question center, so just I'm looking if some kind of help if, uh, if you are getting from your side, it will be very uh, grateful for us, sir. Great. Uh, again, just to set expectations, I won't get into specific on how you can apply around funding. My webinar is specifically more focused on sort of taking a more strategic approach in terms of looking at incubation and supporting enterprises. Uh, that should ideally then help you with your application. Um, so that's just setting the expectation. Yes, sir. Actually, uh, we are uh, looking for the means to how to get the funding from the government agencies and uh, all other from because already we have applied the uh, 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 seven uh, proposal for the startup to MSME and already mm -hmm. first phase we have cleared and uh, in, right now it is in second phase. So we are uh, thinking for going for the Autonomous Investor Center and MIT. So, so if we are uh, getting any uh, specific guidelines to uh, how to write the proposal and getting the funding from the governments it will be very good, good yeah no so I'm, i i want to set that expectation up front that that's not specifically what this webinar is for it's more around the incubation process yeah um i think next is uh volga verma do you want to go next uh Hi, Amit. Uh, this is Lakhvinder. Uh, okay. uh, I'm joining on the behalf of Volga. I'm a colleague of Volga here at IIT Mundi Catalyst. So uh, I, I will give my introduction because I will be attending the, this session. Mm -hmm. So my name is Lakhvinder Singh and uh, uh, I am uh, I'm working here as an assistant manager incubation. So mm -hmm. um, I'm, uh, I'm taking care of the portfolio uh, for the uh, Nidhi Priyas and CPS that is cyber physical systems uh schemes here uh, in mm -hmm. portfolio is around the like early stage startups and uh, the startups in the seed support in the accelerator so mm -hmm. i'm taking care of the all the uh, three models here mm -hmm. so uh, when i'm talking uh, like talk about the expectation from the webinar there's definitely i want to learn more about uh, how to strengthen strengthen the pipeline for uh, for the incubation uh, for the mm -hmm. various uh, for the incubator that, that I specifically want to uh, know more and about mm -hmm. uh, and also about the 
how to enable the uh, mentoring support how to find uh, mentor and what kind of the mentorship model uh, i want to like uh, can interested to know more from this program for to build Got the it. capacity of the of the startups so Got that it. are the two area uh, areas yeah Got it. yeah thanks a lot dr um Thank the rahul you. sharma do you want to go next Hi, my voice is audible. Yes. Okay. Uh, thanks, Amit, and thanks, Anamika. Uh, so I am working in a step of a Thapa University as an incubation manager, and uh, currently uh, we have. Uh, I mean to say, we are getting support from MIT, and mm -hmm. uh, today. i because uh, incubation is all about funding and second is the funnel of a startup mm -hmm. so as incubation manager uh, i today i really interested to know about how we can you know improve our funnel of startups so which will help us to make our uh, incubation center more lucrative for the creative and it also help us to make a impact in entire eco ecosystem in uh our area so this is the first you know i mean to say uh, i which i really want to learn from you guys and uh, second is uh, is the you know about the csr which you mentioned uh, so these are the two things which i really looking out from you guys so that's all from my side and uh, thank you amit and anamika sure thanks Yeah um I think Saurav Malik you're next Uh Saurav is again from our team Oh okay, got it So actually I I requested my team as well because they are also budding managers Okay understood no so, no problem. Uh like they are in the process so I thought ki it, it will be a really, really learning process for even them so. Sure Um Mahendra Gupta Mahendra, do you want to introduce yourself? In case you're talking, your voice is not coming across. Mahendra, Mr. Mahendra Gupta is from ABS Engineering College, uh, uh, I Nurture Incubation Center. Yeah, now he's. Am I able to speak now? Yes. yes. Please go ahead. Hi, so uh, very good noon, uh, Alex and Anamika. Uh, my name is Mahendra, and I'm working here as a CEO for this I Nurture Incubation Foundation. Uh, we are uh, uh, a incubation center hosted by a private engineering college here in Ghaziabad, ABES Engineering College. So, uh, spending a long time here uh, in a private sector for innovation entrepreneurship. What challenge I face? Uh, that is a, a, a short revenue is a, is a largely expected by the host institute, right? Mm -hmm. So that your operation cost could be in a, in a, in a easily managed, right? so uh, in in a line uh, people do not have a long you know, uh, waiting period uh, especially those who are uh, supporting us mm -hmm. and uh, it also become a challenge uh, when you are stuck somewhere in a scheme uh, where now uh, operation cost is not managed by the uh, government one mm -hmm. second uh, uh, see these days the thirst areas are now uh, very very in generic earlier you people used to say we are in a health tech or we are in a, in a some other domain but in general i feel today is in a one is in a bottom line is a is a your new age technology or industry 4.0 and mm -hmm. upward side you have to think about some thirst areas right so uh, in a specifically you know uh, we are looking uh, how to you know find out these thirst areas uh, and so that we can define myself now a, a incubator which is a, some something different and which can uh, you know uh, fetch the good you know, uh, startup got it. okay Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Raju Lakshmi, do you want to go next? Uh, from organizing team, we can go to Mr. Mandeep Singh. Mandeep Singh, uh, oh. please share. Okay, I think uh, Rahul oh, Sharma uh, joined from the same institute. Uh, am I okay. correct? Okay, Mr. Singh is saying. Yeah, something. me and Rahul are from the same institute. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, yes.
Yes, you are. Yes. Great. Okay. Um, yeah, no, so this, this gives me. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Thabar Institute and we are handling. Hello. Yes. yes. Go ahead. Yeah, please. Thank you. So it was established by DST earlier and recently it has been supported by MIT. So our main sector and theme is around IT enabled services related startups. And currently we have three to four. Sorry, Mandeep, I don't know if it's my side, but your voice is breaking. Yeah, uh, it's very okay. feeble. It's breaking. Working on machine learning and AI as well. Students want to see and can classify. Well, sir, uh, uh, let me introduce again from uh, Rahul's account because we are sitting together from the same institute. Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, so uh, just expectation as already told by Rahul, he is an recently joined us as incubation manager. So I thought uh, it's really uh, wonderful for him to learn what is the incubation process is. Mm -hmm. My experience uh, since I'm working here with, uh, with this step since 2017 is this, that our incubation process is a little bit dynamic. Dynamic uh, as far as expectation of our students are concerned. So mm -hmm. when they are regular students, their expectations are different. When they become alumni or they are interned at, at another startup to grow their startups, their expectation from incubators are different. And mm -hmm. later on, when they grow up or got support from uh, funding agencies like Multi, we have three, four uh, startups funded by them. Then mm -hmm. their expectations are different. So yeah. I want to learn how to cater these kinds of different dynamic expectations of our, uh, of our startups. Got it. Yeah, and that's, I think, something that we can definitely pick up during um, the conversation around challenges. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, Aditya, Bhatia, you have raised your hand. Do you want to go next? Yeah, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I just have two, three questions. and. Mm -hmm. Hope so uh, might be covered into the presentation. So I'm basically from a healthcare background and I just wanted to understand the third point, which you said in the last slide, that's the, how the uh, process from idea to incubation and then to development happens. Secondly, after the company is being incubated. So what are the system and processes that happens inside the incubation center? And the mm -hmm. third one is somebody is looking forward for a co-founder into a different sector or into mm -hmm. a different department might be for a co-founder into operations, co-founder into a tech background. So mm -hmm. how that networking and how that correlation happens once sure. the company is being incubated. Sure. And the fourth point is, uh, as it is a vast point, but if you can give some highlight over it, like how the exit strategy is being made or being done. So just a little input or information for that send companies coming so they can have a clear idea what should be the exit strategy for the people who are investing into it. Got it. And uh, Aditya, if, if, if I got you right, you're looking at setting up a startup or thinking on those lines? Absolutely. Got it. Okay. Um, and just to set your expectations, uh, there are certain things that you would raise that I will be covering, like the process of idea to an implementation part. Uh, some of that processes, um, maybe a bit about, you know, identifying co-founders, uh, how to, how an incubator can help in setting systems and processes. That is something that I would cover. Um, what, but I'll be covering it from an incubator point of view more than uh, a startup point of view. Got it. Um, the exit strategy part might not be something that I will cover. Uh, maybe I can cover it Again, from an incubator point of view, an incubator investing in a startup. Uh, given that this uh, webinar is specifically um, for incubators, uh, so, so my a lot of my content uh, and conversation is going to be around uh, focused around that. So just setting that expectation. 
no because whenever we fill those forms for incubations uh, so there is always a point like what is the exit strategy like for a startup point of view or for the various point of uh, people who are coming with the idea so yeah. what they have to think for that point of phase because they are blank into that phase so what there should a uh, thought process should be there got it okay so let let's pick that up during the q and a part uh, because i know that i don't have any specific slides around it um and then again we can we can have a conversation around that that's not a question um hey, is there anyone yet to introduce yourself uh, i know a few more people have joined since we had started Sure. Yeah, hi. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, mm -hmm. IT Mind. Please, sure, sir. So, sure. So this is Saurabh Chaudhary, uh, General Manager from IT Mind Catalyst. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so the IT Mind Catalyst is the incubator set up by IT Mind in the uh, state of Madhya Pradesh. Um, mm -hmm. We are also the tied uh, 2.0 uh, level three uh, incubation center. So we are uh, from the webinar. We are expecting uh, to understand about the uh, the basically to know more about the capacity building because it's a um, the incubation itself is a, a new uh, sort of industry and yeah. it's very important to develop capacity uh, inside the team uh, to yeah. cater to the startup. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a focus area for our incubation is uh, basically three areas we are looking at. Uh, environment and sustainability and then we are looking at himalaya uh, focused uh, problems and the mm -hmm. third human interaction as the technology theme we have uh, okay. and then uh, then we uh, are selecting a startup at uh, all different stages so we have actually identified uh, four different phases uh, phase mm -hmm. zero phase one phase two and phase three uh, so mm -hmm. starting with the uh, eir stage, uh, we are uh, which we call it as a phase zero then we have a phase one which is a three month program uh, or sort of incubation and then we have one year incubation program and then finally phase three as a accelerator program sure and uh, sure so this is um, thank you great yeah no i think we'll be covering a, quite a bit on the capacity building part of it for sure yes um any anyone else left uh, i just want to make from sure abv iit and gwalior uh, this is the uh, fifth center. Uh, Mr. Koshlin, have you joined from Gwalior? You're on mute uh, in case you're talking. Yes. Okay, we can start. Okay, great. All right. Yeah. So the reason I wanted to do this exercise is just to set uh, some basic expectation in terms of what's going to be covered uh, during this webinar. Great. So, so let's start with just what is the incubation model, right? Most of you are running incubators. There are a couple of startups here as well who's probably looking at um, applying for an incubator as well to really understand what is an incubation model. Um, in simple words, it's basically helping a founder or a, a group of co-founders move from an idea to really test hypothesis, right? Um, for me, the way I see it is somebody has an idea, there is an hypothesis behind it. It could be a product or a service that's solving a problem, right? And them saying, hey, my product or service can solve this problem. That's the hypothesis. The critical role for me that the incubator place is helping figure whether the hypothesis can be validated, right? Uh, let's take examples of something like an Uber, right? Everybody knows about Uber. They're an aggregator for uh, taxis, right? Uh, nothing like that existed really before Uber came into the market. Yeah, their, 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 their hypothesis was if we aggregate taxis, it will make it easier for users, right? Um, and then their, you know, Y Combinator Accelerator actually helped them uh, test out that hypothesis. They first launched in, uh, if I remember, San Francisco. Um, so, you know, that's what an incubator does, right? And from there, building on to creating a business model. Once you test and validate a hypothesis, you, you help the company really build out what their model is going to be. Um, you know, we most of us know 
the business model canvas. So really plotting it out and testing each of those blocks, let's say in a business model canvas, right? And from there, what you do, what you are aiming for is then the company knows clearly what its business model is. You're help, you helped it pivot maybe multiple times to reach uh, a reasonably stable business model. And from there, idly company receives funding or uh, startup receives funding and it reaches a growth phase. Um, and what, what you're doing in, in very simple terms is reducing risk, right? Uh, you, at an idea stage, the risk is very high, right? Nothing has been tested out. Uh, incubators play that critical role of moving the pendulum from being risky to safe, right? Um, helping companies move from being cash burning to at least uh, a clear pathway uh, of profitability. So that's you know what I see as an incubation model uh, in very simple terms, and that's what all incubators should be aiming to do, right? Thinking about it from a risk point of view, from a cash flow point of view, really helping test out hypothesis um, that the company or a startup has, and from there moving, validating those hypotheses uh, to create at least some level of uh, current business model. Um, so when it comes to incubation models, and th this is based on uh, looking at various models out there, um, they can be actually classified or grouped into three set of models. Uh, and, and some of the models will have all three components, uh, maybe two components. Uh, there are incubators that provide uh, only infrastructure primarily, um, uh, co-working space. Uh, the, a good example is uh, Startup Village in Kerala. Um, this was one of the first incubators, if I remember right, uh, in India that, that was set up in Kerala with partnership with the government of Kerala. And then they revolutionized the startup space in Kerala by just providing space for young people who, who wanted to come sit, work, be part of a community, right? Um, RT Lab Foundation, for example, again, uh, uh, is a not-for-profit uh, driven incubator uh, that specifically looks uh, at, at startups that are working uh, in solving problems play, faced by people with disability. Um, then I think there is also Workbench Projects, uh, which is a Bangalore-based, uh, again, incubator that provides um, an engineering space. So they, they have a lathe, they have a carpentry room. So people who want to create stuff uh, usually come there. And, and they, their main focus is just providing infrastructure, uh, making it easy for people who have an idea to come really build a product or a service uh, and, and utilize the infrastructure. Um, what we've seen is now sort of the revolution into uh, program models where most of you do that, right? You run programs uh, which have a specific theme uh, or, or a program with a specific objective. Um, for example, uh, again, another you know, well-known um, incubator in India, CIIE, which is based out of IM Ahmedabad, runs a number of them. They've recently launched a sustainability value accelerator uh, in in partnership with Accenture, right? Um, so they, they're specifically looking at startups that are working in the sustainability space. And then, you know, you you, pro, you provide different sort of uh, capacity building support specifically around a program. Um, the difference primarily in an infrastructure and a program model is a program model tend to be very time focused. It's usually three months, six months, nine month program. Whereas an infrastructure model is usually just open for applications throughout the year. Uh, so, you know, anybody with an idea or a startup can apply, whereas in a program model, you usually have a window. Um, the third, which is where I think a lot more evolution in the innovation model is happening, is being even more specific in terms of what is capacity building that can be done um, for startups. Uh, these involve business capability, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but specifically working with startups that are selected in, in enhancing their business development capacity and market reach, right? Uh, one of the biggest challenges most startup faces is, is getting that first set of customers. Um, and then uh, until you get 
uh, some type of customers, you're not able to really validate the model. So these are the three sort of, you know, on a, on a very high level, three different types of incubation models. Uh, most incubators, as I said, uh, have a combination of this. Uh, again, it is also dependent on who's funding, things like that. Um, but as, as you think about your incubator going forward, this is a framework that you can use in terms of a uh, different types of incubation models. So for example, uh, what I've seen is uh, a lot, just to build pipeline infrastructure is used, right? You, you already have existing infrastructure. There is uh, a capital cost that is already gone. Instead of making it lie vacant, you open it up, right? That helps build pipeline, for example. So those, those are different models that you can think about. Um, moving forward, I just want to take a quick exercise um, because it's critical uh, with at least my work with incubators and startups. Uh, as an incubator, being very clear about what your objective is, what your mission or vision is, right? Um, if you're working with startups, where do you see your support for startups, you know, going from? Um, Incubators that are successful are very clear about what the objectives are. Um, let's look at the most famous one, right? Y Combinator, um, uh, Techstars. These, these incubators very clearly know what their objective is. Uh, y Combinator very clearly says, hey, if we select you, we give you X amount of money. This is what you're going to achieve. By the end of it, we get you to pitch to investors, right? It's, it's very, very specific in terms of what their objective is. Um, Techstars is also very similar, right? Um, even if you look at uh, Sequoia's accelerator program, which looks at slightly later stage companies, again, very clearly says, hey, this is what we are going to provide in terms of support. Or um, 100X VC, which has been successful in India, also says very clearly, hey, if you're an idea stage, these are things that you need to validate. This is what we will help you with. Um, this is where we can get you to, um, you know, to be very clear in terms of the objective. Maybe vision and mission is not the right term, but it's I, I, what I want you to do is maybe take two minutes, uh, and you probably know this already, and if you do know, uh, that'll be great. In, in terms of what is your when you work with startups, uh, just take two minutes, each of you, um, write it on a piece of paper, uh, and once... You know, the two minutes is up. If anybody is ready, um, it'll be great for you to just speak. So I'm going to stop there. Um, any questions around this exercise? Okay. Um, great. So two minutes, just think about it. What's the objective of your incubator, especially in terms of you know, the support that you provide uh, startups, um, the question being, you know, what to where do you want your startup to grow? Yeah, just being clear about that. Just take two minutes and write it on a piece of paper. And if anybody is ready, feel free to speak up. Alex, uh, mm -hmm. say Mahindra. Yeah. So Alex, uh, uh, when I was uh, jot down this, you know, uh, mm -hmm. concept of incubation center and uh, keeping my own situation entire uh, um, geography entire ecosystem stakeholders in mind what mm -hmm. i write down i, I just speak right yes, so, yes uh, absolutely uh, when i write the uh, vision that is a create an ecosystem for nurturing young mind by way of spreading innovation and entrepreneurial culture and quality mm -hmm. incubation support got because, it so, huh. so my question is what do you mean by quality incubation support so when I say quality incubation support, I mean to be a, a good mentoring. Mm -hmm. I mean to provide a logistic support. I mm -hmm. mean to provide the funding assistance. Got it. Great. Right. And uh, uh, parallelly, when I write the mission statement of this, do I write reduce the risk of doing business or innovation through mentoring and support of youth, which actually I answered, right? Yes. No, that's perfect. Great. So you, you know what you you know want to achieve, which yes. is great. Um, anybody else want to go? So hi, uh, hi Amit, Lakshinder this side. Yes. 
yeah so uh, here uh, we at iit mandi catalyst mm-hmm. so uh, sitting in the himalayas uh, our uh, our tagline is to build for himalayas yeah. and build in himalayas mm-hmm. so so we are building the solutions for the various uh, uh, like we are helping the entrepreneurs to find out the solution for the various problems various uh, issues being faced uh, at the very, in the various industries that is one mm-hmm. thing so at the same time the uh, like our aim is to provide high touch environment uh, to the startups mm-hmm. to nurture and guide them through their entrepreneurial journey yeah. and make them successful uh, from like uh, the uh, the like saurabh chobe our general manager recently said that mm-hmm. we support the startup from the phase we have four phases from phase 0 to phase phase 3 that is we start start uh, support to a startup from once he has a idea mm-hmm. when he comes as a uh, eir entrepreneur in residence then he goes yeah. to phase when one uh, then validate his idea uh, build some proof of concept then we connect uh, we take him to the in some uh, incubation program in with some kind of funding some kind of support yeah. mentoring technical support uh, technical mentoring uh, uh, industry connects uh, government partnership kind of things are uh, given to the startup then mm-hmm. further uh, in phase 2 we p- provide them higher fundings seed support is given to them and and last we have a accelerator program in which uh, we provide them uh, high touch uh, highly customized program in which we diagnose the various needs which the startup has and the expert panel uh, fix some milestone for the startup so that the its growth can be accelerated in less possible time So, so we, this is the our agenda of like working. Got it. So your your objective is actually to help a startup from let's say an idea stage to almost a growth phase, right? And you you have different program models around that. Right. Right. Great. Great. Um, anybody else? So what I'm not what I'm not looking for is the entire program model, but being very specific in terms of what your objective is, right? when when the incubator was set up um it could be to just build the ecosystem right uh, or it could be to specifically cater to um like like the uh, like uh, like when the what you just said right it's very specifically catering to um startups from himalayas right um that that has focus on like solving problems uh, in that region so yeah anyone else okay um so the reason i i put this slide is everything that you do has to be objective driven right um it's it what tends to happen with a lot of organizations be it startups um uh, be it larger organization they they do a vision mission exercise when they are starting off and then it goes on your board somewhere or it's in your ppd nobody really goes back and reflects it the reason i'm telling that is you need to go and reflect back right you need to really understand why you are doing things right uh, because it leads to sort of the next most important thing according to me in an incubation process which is sourcing and selection um the reason i say it's the most critical piece is simply because who you select determines the entire outcome right um it's it's almost like a marriage right uh, if if you don't marry the right person it can lead to a lot of headache um so so you know selecting sort of your incubators is almost the same right you 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 need to work closely with them uh, their ability to adapt pivot becomes critical uh so sourcing and selection is for me uh even more important than the incubation process the incubation process can can be customized um you've certain control over it whereas the sourcing and selection part is something that you have complete control right you decide which companies which founder becomes part of your program um so I'm, i i i want to call it out um specifically around sourcing and selection um no matter what the program model is you need to spend time 
in doing this, right? Um, it, it, I, it, everybody needs to take a, a, a focused, systematic approach, right? And it starts with really understanding or doing a stakeholder mapping exercise. Um, this is something when I was at Upaya, when we ran accelerator programs, uh, we did uh, on an annual basis. So we've, we've done accelerator programs around agriculture, around livelihood. Um, if we were doing livelihood, we would do an entire stakeholder mapping of all players, be it investors, be it universities, um, be it existing enterprises, do a stakeholder mapping because that's where your pipeline is going to come from, right? Um, and then building those partnerships, right? Reaching out to them, um, having a mutual agreement. And most, most of the time, people are willing to do that. I, I very rarely face someone saying, hey, we don't want to share our pipeline, right? Um, we don't want to promote your program. Uh, because everybody is looking to help each other, but it needs to be a much more systematic approach, right? For example, again, taking on the IIT Monday, right? Um, they, there's no need for them to go promote themselves in, in, in Tamil Nadu, right? The chances of them finding a, 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 an enterprise that they can incubate um, that is specifically looking at the Malian region is going to be less, but they can specifically look at uh, universities maybe uh, look at um, you know uh, other stakeholders, uh, existing organizations, NGOs, for example, turn out to be a good source of pipeline working in that region who could provide pipeline, for example. Um, so you know, taking that systematic and focused approach. Um, the other thing is the selection process, right? And I want to highlight some of the best practices um, that. Uh, research has shown, um, it's, it's usually almost always best to select startups that have more than one uh, founder, right? Um, there are reasons behind it. There is synergy of skill sets, things like that. Uh, not all founders need to be full-time, at least one founder uh, being full-time helps. Um, you know, that's something that has been documented in terms of um, reducing the probability of failure. The other is looking at startups or ideas that haven't uh, applied for multiple programs. Uh, this is a challenge that I think the Indian ecosystem especially faces where we have uh, startups going from one program to another program to another. Um, I've seen startups that have done incubation program, done an accelerator program, then done an incubation program. Um, it, it almost seems like they, they want to be stuck in kindergarten and not wanting to go to um, you know, first standard or second standard and grow. Um, so not really you know, looking at companies that have gone through multiple programs. Uh, they, they, for me, that's a sign that there is an unwillingness to pivot and grow uh, or you know, call on failure, right? Not, not, not all startups are meant to grow um, in an almost you know, uh, I would say 90% of startups tend to fail in the first, uh, I'd, say, I'd say, five years. Um, and the last point during the selection was testing out founders, right? Um, so I don't know if you know about an incubator called Unlimited. Um, they run a very detailed selection process um, where they really test out uh, the ability of founders to be open to ideas and how... Um, uh, how flexible they are, right? And this is very, very critical for incubators because you, what you want to really help founders with is, uh, as we said in the incubation model, right? Really validate and test the hypothesis. And that willingness when an hypothesis is wrong, their willingness to pivot uh, and try something new is critical. Uh, I've primarily worked with social entrepreneurs and social entrepreneurs to just let you know are uh, one of the one of the toughest group of people to work with because social entrepreneurs are generally uh, full of passion. Um, they want to solve a problem, and according to them, they have found a solution, right? Uh, and when you're an incubator or an accelerator, and you're helping them validate their model, and when when you see that the results are wrong, right? Let's say their approach at an intervention is not really working out to convince them 
that what they are passionate about is wrong is really, really tough and getting them to pivot. Um, so, you know, uh, for example, there was one company that we worked with uh, in waste management um, and, and, and the founder uh, came with a lot of passion. Uh, and, and, and when we really went into the model, worked with them, uh, helped them identify a few clients, the feedback that we got is they needed to tweak the model. Um, and then the founder was unwilling to do that. Uh, because they they had a very specific focus, uh, and especially driven by passion. So, yeah. so just you know, em emphasizing on the importance of building that sourcing pipeline, really taking a, a focused and strategic approach, uh, and from there, when you go do the selection, being very clear about what you're selecting for as well. Um, really testing out founders. Um, Moving on now on the incubation side, right? And this is some interesting data uh, that an Andy report, uh, especially is focusing on impact in incubators. Uh, um, they they questioned incubate uh, um, incubating companies um, before they went for a program and after they went for the program. Um, before they went for the program, you can see like the most interesting and most useful according to them would have been access to mentors, business plan development, uh, pitch day, things like that. Whereas what they saw was post the program where companies really got value out, right? Uh, and that's what we want to also try and do as incubators, right? It was designing KPIs uh, or core metrics, like really track progress of companies, right? Um, access to legal service, professional advice, co-working spaces turned out to be very, very useful. Um, you know, these these were things that were most valued by companies. And I, I put I, I wanted to put this out is to really understand. You know, we we tend to take an approach where we say, "Hey, this is our program model. Um, you need to adjust to it." Right. Uh, and not really understanding what companies need or what they are looking for and where they can get most value out. Um, which leads to sort of this model um, that has been documented around the world uh, as being a successful model. It starts with need analysis, and I heard a few of the incubators talk about it. Right? Um, doing a need analysis at an idea stage even, right? Um, to really understand what are the challenges that uh, a startup or an idea stage founder is facing. Um, being able to identify what the strength and weaknesses are. Uh, panels are great because then you get a third party opinion as well. Um, really pushing sort of the, the entrepreneurs to see if they understand uh, what their challenges are. Um, so that's I think the first key area from a strategic approach on enterprise development. The next area, if you ask me, is around business development. Um, we all know that early stage entrepreneurs face a big challenge in getting their first customer. And the first customer is really the person uh, or that can really validate if a model works or not, right? Uh, if a service um, or product is going to have some level of acceptance within its customer segment, right? Um, then their ability to pivot and feedback quickly based on that feedback. Um, I think incubators uh, tend to spend a lot more time in the last part of it, which is fundraising and developing companies, reach pitch decks, connecting them to investors. I, I, those are still important, but for me, the validation, the business development part is critical. Uh, and once that business development part is done, then just setting systems and processes in place. Uh, I've been an investor for the last uh, five to six years. When we look at early stage companies, when they have validated with customers, when they have some level of systems and processes in place, fundraising, they become much more attractive to fundraisers, like to investors. Because what you're doing is reducing risk, which is what every investor is looking at, right? Which is why I kept fundraising at the end. Uh, most 
companies or uh, most startups apply to incubators because of the fundraising piece. It's only once they get go through a process of business development and process, setting up process and systems that they really understand the value of it. Uh, and, and the reason, again, as I say, it helps the startups, but it also makes these companies uh, more attractive to investors. Great. Um, and then coming to the last part of my presentation is looking at investors, right? Uh, end of the day, uh, one of the key metrics to, to really gauge incubators is the simple metric of how many companies got investment, right? Which leads to incubators to need, or need of incubators to build better partnership with investors. Um, for me, that starts with the objective, right? You being clear about what are the type of companies you want to work with. Then you look at the kind of investors that you need to, you need, you need to really work with. Uh, and, and again, this is again from that study that was done by Andy and IDEV. Um, that very specifically look, talk, spoke to investors in terms of what are they looking for from incubators, right? What are drivers of partnership? Uh, deal flow uh, was clearly the number one, right? Investors are always looking for new deals, to new companies that they can uh, talk to, which goes to the earlier sort of point that I was making in terms of identifying companies who haven't gone through programs, right? You you end of the day have a uh, sort of fresh set of companies that you can potentially give to uh, investors. Um, it's also important not just calling investors for, let's say the pitch day, but having maybe a, a, a two pager on the companies, right? That you can regularly share, sharing updates on how the companies are progressing uh, with investors, keeping them in the loop. These are ways that you can keep engaging the investors. Uh, and then they are always looking for potential deal flow. Um, then the other thing, critical thing that I want to call out is just simplifying due diligence and you know, due diligence and transaction cost. Investors uh, tend to spend a lot of time, especially at an early stage, really understanding, trying to do the due diligence, uh, validating. Uh, when they are validating the deal, when they are looking at early stage companies, I think incubators can play a critical role in reducing that transaction cost. Right? I, I could do a, an entire webinar specifically around this area because I've been an investor, and if you know incubators or uh, accelerators did that work in terms of how they can reduce both time, um, make sure that startups have the proper documentation, helping startups understand deal negotiation terms, things like that, that can end of the day speeding up the investment process, right? Um, these are, I, I, I put this down here simply because these are areas that you as an incubator can work in terms of helping build that partnership with investors. Great, so that's, uh, I know looking at time as well, um, what I wanted to cover, give you sort of the highlights in terms of areas that you can look at when you're taking a more strategic enterprise development part. Um, what we can do, I think we have another 10, 15 minutes if I'm right, Anamika? Yes, yes. Great, which is, I think we're on time. Um, what I want to do is just open it up for Q&A. Um, think about it from challenges point of view. I heard uh, some of the people raise questions around just fundraising for incubators, right? I just wanted to throw that out. Incubators around the world are traditionally a not-for-profit model. When I mean a not-for-profit model is un, un, there are only very few incubators that actually make money. Um, those are incubators that specifically work in technology sector that are able to invest and have been able to get returns because they've you know, held a percentage of share uh, equity in that company. And as the company grew, they were able to exit in about five years. But if you take 99% of incubators in the world, they are not for profit, which means they, they will not make a profit, uh, which means you'll have to identify other sources of funding. 
uh, the other source of funding could be, you know, from government to CSR. Uh, and, and the way you can build that up uh, or how, how you can make yourself attractive is taking all the approaches that I spoke about earlier, right? A more strategic approach in identifying your sourcing and selection. And from there, being able to provide uh, sort of very targeted uh, support to the companies, thereby de-risking them and making them more attractive to investors. Um, let me stop there, open it up. Any questions? Um, let's make this interactive. If somebody has a question, uh, if somebody wants to respond with an answer or they have tried uh, something that has worked, um, you know, feel free to talk. I request all the participants if uh, you can unmute and interact further. Alex? Is it mine? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, do you feel that today is a CSR funding is you know, uh, easily understand by the corporate uh, for incubation centers? I think there's still uh, a large gap there. I don't think most corporates understand uh, how to really leverage CSR funding for incubation. Um, I think what has changed at least is the, the rules that have changed where I think now they can even uh, CSR funding and go to a Section 8 company and as long as the incubator is a Section 8 company, things like that. Um, I think there are certain corporates who understand it. Uh, Tata's, for example, Accenture, um, you look at some of the incubator models and who's funding it. Uh, not everybody does it, but there is a I, I would put it this way, right? There is a lot more interest amongst corporate to support incubation process. What is important is for you to align what is the company looking for. So for example, um, Prestige uh, or Brigade Group in Bangalore uh, are big real estate players uh, in the sector, right? they've now started getting into the incubation space and working with incubators, right? But their specific focus is something related to real estate. So either you have to prepare program models that you can pitch to companies, but specifically meeting their requirement, if that right. makes sense. Right. Uh, uh, Alex, a quick question, and then uh, probably I finish from my side. Uh, sure. See, uh, when we engaging the mentors and... Uh, uh, see and uh, see engagement of mentors with the startups uh, definitely requires some engagement of transactions, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, either these transactions uh, are go in in terms of equity or it's go on a payment basis. One and because I am facing the challenge of you now holding as an incubator holding the equity in the startups. Sometimes we hold the equity in the startups and a startup uh, shut down in a, in a journey of you know, one and a half year or two years. So we yeah. feel that we vestige a lot of energy resources and legal kind of burden we feel as an incubator manager. Got it. Um, so, so I had two points, right? One is uh, in terms of how to engage mentors uh, without, with the lower cost, if I'm right. Right. Um, I, I think there is still a lot of interest uh, amongst experienced professionals to work as mentors. Um, I think it starts with, you know, it, the need analysis that I was talking about, really understanding what do companies need, right? Right. Um, and, and then identifying mentors. Um, successful mentoring programs around the world. So, for example, in Santa Clara University in... Um, uh, in in, in uh, San Francisco, um, uh, as 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 a pure free mentoring program. But what they do is identify clearly what the company needs, and then identify a mentor who can help them out. Right. Um, the, so what that helps is both ways. Right. Uh, the mentor has clear interest and the ability to solve. Uh, the problem that the startup is facing. Uh, the, 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 the startup has a problem that needs to be solved where the mentor has the expertise. What happens in a lot of mentoring program is just, uh, you're just 
you know, connected with someone, uh, there is a lack of real objectivity. You know, simple things like that can change the mentoring program. Um, I, th I think there is still a large pool of mentors. I mentor a number of startups pro bono, um, I, and I meet with other mentors who do it pro bono as well. You have to take that effort, reach out to mentors, but the way to make it successful is clearly knowing what the company needs and what the skill set the mentor brings. Right. Great. Um, anyone else? Alex, would you answer my second question? Oh, sorry. Yeah, the second question was sorry. It's related with the equity holding as a uh, yes. as a startup or as right. a incubator. Yeah, sorry, I've, I, I've written down the mentoring <laughs> part. <laughs> yeah, so on the equity part, right? It, it's always uh, a challenge. Um, if you're looking at it from a payoff or meeting your cost, uh, to be honest, realistically, it's not going to happen, right? Uh, unless you're able to identify companies that can grow in two to three years can give you an exit, right? Um, but it's, some, it's, it's a model that has worked successfully in the tech space and only in the tech space. Uh, because in the tech space, you see companies raising uh, multiple rounds of funding in two to three years. Got it. Um, the question on, is that the right approach? I, I think you should still do it. Uh, it's difficult to get companies to, or startups to pay for any of the services. Therefore, equity becomes uh, the potential one. What I would do is, uh, in terms of paperwork, to have a very simple agreement, right? Um, don't get too legal, don't get into the valuation game even. Um, just have, or, or, or even if it's a valuation, just have a standard valuation of, say, two crores, uh, two person stake, right? Um, of five. <laughs> Be, be very clear, right? For any any startup that you select, that's it. So then there's no 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 time wasted on negotiation. You have a standard template that you can share with startup. What the clause that I would add as an incubator is an exit in the first round itself of fundraise, right? Um, so what that is, that at least gives you some kind of a cash flow. The, the, the negative part that I can see is if a company is successful, right, then you, you lose out on the upside. Um, but what it does is it at least ensures some kind of cash flow. It, it shows exit as well, which is a good metric to showcase um, when you want to promote uh, your incubator as well. Right, right. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Any other questions? We still have seven minutes. Uh, or I was very, very convincing that nobody has any questions or nothing made sense about what I spoke about. <laughs> any questions from? Uh, Not like that, Amit. Uh, so the thing is, uh, some, of, some part of my question was answered in the previous question, uh, which you just answered. So uh, other uh, I think Lak Mr. Singh Lakwinder Singh. Yeah. yeah, I can hear him and and Amika. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. So other other concern area uh, for uh, the incubators who are dealing with the early stage startups is uh, is the is, is the uh, technological the startups who are specifically working in some technology or uh, development area. So uh, to provide them the intense uh, technical support uh, that required. Mm -hmm. That also, which I had seen, that also lead to the failure of the starter at the very early stage. The problem they might had solved at that particular time, but uh, but not able to being provided with the exact technical uh, support, uh, mentorship that that startup may, may fail. So, what what is your take for these kind of startup? What you suggest? What should be the approach for these? Yeah, no. So the approach there is I I think finding the right mentor, right? Um, most technology, very rarely do you see a technology startup that is completely new, right? Um, if the SaaS-based pro uh, 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 product, they're similar 
as based product out there um, or a company that's already doing it. The idea is, can you find a mentor um, from a larger organization who's doing something similar, right? Um, there's also on the technology side, the risk of, you know, IP and things like that, but that's a risk that early stage startups will need to take, especially if they, if they have a problem to solve, right? Um, again, it's, it's going in detail about what the technical problem is. Uh, in, in incubators, uh, if you look at incubators, within the incubator, the bandwidth, especially when it comes to technology problem, is very limited. I think that's where then you really look at identifying mentors. Um, what I have seen is working with mentors um, is even if the company is willing to give sweat equity to a mentor, right? But being very clear about what the problem statement is, what does the mentor come in to solve? Wherein I've seen it successfully happen where the mentor almost becomes like a co-founder, which is you know very in-depth engagement for a period of say three to six months till a problem is solved. Um, the example that I'm talking about is a startup that was working uh, in the artisan space, uh, handicraft artisan space, and they were looking to develop a technology platform, right? Uh, and and they, we, we were able to bring in a mentor who literally worked with them for about six months, hands-on. Um, the mentor had already extensive knowledge about how to build sort of a marketplace model, for example. Got it. And in return, the company gave sweat equity. Got it. So, you, you need to really think about models where end of the day, the mentor, depending on how much time and effort they put in, that they can get compensated. In most cases, it doesn't have to be money. It can be um, equity from the company as well. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Amit. Thank you for that. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah. Anyone else? If not, we can wind up i just want to quickly summarize um yeah so starting with just being very clear objective is as an incubator right um you can have different models but really taking a step back and thinking hey why are we doing this incubation uh, all your decisions need to be linked to that uh, which leads to sourcing and selection being the um, from a sourcing point, if you're really thinking about how to create strategic partnerships, um, and from an enterprise development point, if you're looking at it from a framework of need analysis, helping the companies build their first customer, from their building process and systems, that end of the day, that validation and process and systems de-risks the probability of the company's failure that makes it more attractive for fundraisers, right? Um, and how to get investors onboarded, right? To become partners with you is to give regular updates on pipeline um, and help in reducing transaction costs. Um, so I hope this was all helpful. Um, I'm reachable. This is my email address, amitalex at gmail.com. Or you can just look me up uh, on LinkedIn as well. Great. Um, I know we have a few more minutes. Happy to take any questions. If not, give everybody, I think, two minutes back. <laughs> yeah. Alex, uh, this is Mahindra. Yeah. Alex, you said uh, uh, this is the best to be in a uh, selected startups having in a more than one founders, right? Yes. Uh, uh, see, uh, I am sharing my own story here from the incubation center. I have in a, mm -hmm. a quite large number of student-based uh, quite success, early stage successful failed startups, right? Yeah. And the fail, reason of failure are only the dispute between the these two now founder and co-founders and then others, right? Yeah. So uh, and uh, so I I largely now in my in selection process I look at more or look at on uh, uh, the technology portion probably on uh, the innovation business portion, but in the side of when I look at there are the multiple numbers of now three four unnecessary now uh, partners are over there though i try to avoid it yeah yeah no absolutely so so more partners also doesn't mean success it's right. about complementary skill sets within founders right in, in student um, startups there's generally a number 
like when we were in college also if we had the chance we would rope in as many friends as possible as support right um, how many of them really bring value is the question as an incubator you should be asking right during the selection process it can be easily identified right, uh, right. when you when you question on what each one's role is True, 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 true. Yeah, so which goes back to the selection process of putting in a little more effort when when you're doing the selection process. And if, if, even if there are too many co-founders and, you know, the, let's say the technology is great, the, the initial idea is great. As an incubator, one of the roles that you can work with them is having a clear founder agreement, right? Right. Clear understanding of in terms of what startups fail to do that, right? They just, hey, we are all friends, but once they are slightly successful, then disagreement creeps in, right? Um, so, so incubators need to play sort of that, um, you know, parental role, if I may put it. Mm -hmm. So we definitely ask for this, you know, uh, founder co founder agreement, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You added value today. Thanks. There is no, no doubt in it, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Alex. And thank you, Anamika. Thank All you. right. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Have a great thank week. You. Thank you, thank Mr. You. Alex. It was wonderful. And I'm really sure, as uh, Mr. Gupta uh, mentioned, that it was really insightful to all of us. Thank you so thank much for your time. Thank you. And I thank all the Tide Centers for joining today. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you, Alex. Thank, thank you, Anika. Thank you, Alex, for your... And please join for the next session on <laughs> compliance and legal advising on uh, 4th March at 11 a.m. Sure. And Amika ji, request you say, Yeah, last session, we can get a link to uh, the Definitely. Yeah, yeah, we Somehow have I missed the actually the because I I was not able to be asked the question about the CSR deeply because you have already organized a session over it. Okay. Yes, yes. I can share the link. Thank I you. will share the link with all of you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, team.